Across New Zealand, flexible road safety barriers are being installed to improve safety and reduce the number of people being killed or seriously injured on our roads. But how do these flexible road safety barriers work? How are they installed and maintained? How do they work with everybody that uses our roads? And how are they improving road safety across Aotearoa? Flexible safety barriers are fitted to our roads to ensure that people are protected from serious harm. Effectively, they act like a safety net. So when a driver veers out of their lane or loses control, the barrier is there to catch them and it flexes. This slows the vehicle down and the barrier absorbs the impact rather than the people in the vehicle. Flexible road safety barriers are a proven and highly effective treatment and they are recognised as a key intervention under Road to Zero. By providing physical separation, flexible road safety barriers prevent high severity injuries and deaths associated with runoff road crashes and head on crashes into oncoming vehicles. Through my many years in, in police, I've attended huge numbers of crashes and often with fatal, very serious outcomes. Uh, there's a huge difference between having a barrier in place and not having a barrier in place. And essentially, if the barrier is in place, the likelihood of a fatal crash is really, really low. Generally, when we know that we're responding to a road traffic crash in RTC, and we know there's a medium barrier, we know highly likely it won't be a head-on. So that makes a huge difference for us in regards to our cognitive load, um, the other services that we interact with, and how we're going to be able to uh, extricate the patient and open the state highway again. So fire and emergency don't just go to fires. We go to a range of emergencies which include motor vehicle crashes. With the introduction of medium barriers has meant that we are not going to head on collisions uh, so that people are, have a better chance of surviving if they have ha indeed had a, had a crash. The, so that's just meant that the, uh, the vehicles are separated while they're still travelling. Um, yeah, it's just it's meant that those head on collisions which are fatal and never have just been greatly reduced. When improving our roads, we also consider the safety of more vulnerable people, such as motorcyclists. Overall, safety barriers can improve safety for motorcyclists. Studies in Sweden show that there has been a 40 to 50% reduction in motorcyclists being killed on roads following the introduction of flexible medium barriers. This is in part due to the reduction in head-on crash risk. In New Zealand, around a quarter of motorcyclist deaths involve a collision with an opposing vehicle. Ultimately, safety barriers are designed to provide a high level of protection to all people from hazards on the side of the road or from oncoming traffic. A key example is Centennial Highway or the stretch of road between Pukaroa Bay and Paikokariki. I've attended four fatal crashes there myself over the years. All of them were before the barriers in place. Since those barriers have been put in place, there hasn't been a single road death in that stretch of road. That demonstrates the value of them. Centennial Highway on State Highway 1 is internationally recognised as a best practice example of applying safe system principles to road design. Uh, in the 10 years prior to installing the medium barrier, there was on average one death and one serious injury each and every year. In 2004, the speed limit was reduced to 80 kilometres an hour and a medium barrier was installed and since then, uh, head-on crashes have virtually been eliminated and we've seen a more than 90% reduction in deaths and serious injuries. On average, roads that have had median flexible road safety barriers installed have seen the number of people killed or seriously injured reduced by around 65%. Research shows fitting both roadside and median barriers on high speed roads can reduce death and serious injury by as much as 90%. An important part of improving our roads with safety interventions, such as flexible road safety barriers, will be their ongoing maintenance. With more flexible road safety barriers being installed, we'll need to incorporate their repair, after a crash, into our ongoing maintenance programme. We have standard operating procedures, so we know what we're going to do in terms of when the road is blocked and we have to deal with it um, with the crash. Um, and then obviously once the crash has been cleared up, we need to consider getting the replacement posts if it's a flexible barrier and then re-tightening and tensioning the wires, which is key for the structural integrity and the safety of that barrier. While they may be damaged after a crash, flexible safety barriers still offer protection. An important aspect of rolling out medium barriers as part of Road to Zero is going to be their ongoing maintenance to replace posts as the barrier is struck. We do know that the tension that's left in the barriers will provide a level of protection but it will be necessary to replace those posts as part of our ongoing maintenance. 
And certainly the flexor barriers are slightly easy to repair. Um, they can just go and replace the posts and retighten the wires. And it's important for our team that are doing the maintenance that they maintain them in good order. So that obviously when they do get hit, they need to be out there and repairing them. But it's just part and parcel of feeding that into their standard maintenance regimes um, and working out the optimal way to get in and repair those barriers. Flexible safety barriers are helping reduce the number of people being killed or seriously injured on our roads, but they're not without challenges. One of the main challenges we have is um, providing a, a road environment for all road users, um, and we're obviously focused on particularly more vulnerable users, or, you know, people that walk alongside the highway or certainly cyclists, and we want to make it safer for them, but also the freight uh, fraternity and particularly over-dimensioned loads. Um, so these safety barriers do make life a little bit more challenging for them. So the key thing from our perspective is to consult with them early, understand uh, what their requirements are. Uh, we generally tr try to provide a 10 metre wide by 6 metre high window for these over dimension loads on those key routes. Um, and we do understand that um, when they've got to sort of try and um, work through a narrow corridor of um, a median barrier and a side barrier, it does make it more challenging. Um, and they may need to consider closing the alternate lane if the load's going to hang across the top of the barrier. Uh, but they have some pretty specialised equipment now and they can lift their loads and tilt their loads and move their loads. So the key thing for us is consulting early before we put the barrier in, understand where they're coming from, um, because once it's in, it's, it's obviously something that they need to take account when they're moving those loads, particularly at night. When a crash does happen, whether a road has flexible safety barriers or not, can alter the way emergency services respond. It does make a huge difference for us when we know we're responding to a vehicle accident that has a median barrier. It changes how we approach a scene and how we think about our resources and how we're going to get assistance vehicles to the scene. So if there is a median barrier, we know that one lane is likely to be open um, because the trajectory of the vehicle is stopped by that median barrier, so it keeps the scene isolated for us and that's a huge advantage to how we manage RTCs, road traffic crashes, where significant injury um, could have occurred. Flexible safety barriers are just one of a number of improvements being made to create a safe system and bring us one step closer to an Aotearoa where no one is killed or seriously injured on our roads. Barriers are really important for keeping people safe on the roads. People cross the centre line for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter why, um, but the barrier is going to stop that from occurring and stop them from colliding someone with someone coming in the opposite direction. It's all going to, also going to stop them crashing into something at the side of the road. Um, hey look, barriers are really to be encouraged. They're a really great safety tool. What those medium barriers do is they really isolate the scene. So it uh, reduces the severity of injuries, but then once we're located, it protects us as well. Part of the work that Waka Katahi are doing, like us, is about uh, is the commitment to keeping people safe across New Zealand. Together we're supporting the communities of Aotearoa because they're at the heart of everything that we do. As we move towards a safe system, the shape and nature of our rural roads will need to change, and so too the way we maintain and operate these roads. Our experience with roads such as Centennial Highway, Rangariri and the Bredurwins on State Highway 1 has proven that median barriers save lives, but also that these roads operate well and can be managed successfully through innovative practices such as dropping barriers during maintenance or when there are incidents. We need to build upon these practices and share this knowledge more widely to support wider rollout of these life-saving measures.